All right, hello again everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for tuning in. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch in the A320 flight deck. But as always, before we get started, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below, hit the notification bell, that kind of good stuff. Just helps me keep the channel moving forward here. And I appreciate it if you've done so already for me. So I will go ahead and bring up the slide that we're going to talk about today. So we are still working our way down this section of the, the forward panel portion in the A320 here. So today, the, the switch we're going to stop off and talk about is this one right here. It's the, the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch. And it's just very simply, you know, upon first observation, you see it's a, just an on and off switch, you know, quite literally. And, you know, just as the name implies or the wording that they actually chose to use to, to placard onto the switch here, uh, this will deactivate the anti-skid and the nose wheel systems on the airplane, but there's a little bit more elaboration that should come along with this because there, there's a few more important things to understand about what you're actually doing underneath the hood and you know what what more specifically and directly you're doing by manipulating this switch. And you know, in, in sitting down and thinking about this, I was kind of curious about why the manufacturer chose to to label it and name it in such a way. And I think you know, from from one standpoint, you could argue to say that you know it's just a an in-your-face reminder, more specifically, about what portions of the system you're going to lose if you choose to activate the switch and you know get the plane to do this other desired outcome that you're really more specifically looking for in this situation, for the most part. And there's there's really one major time that this anti-skid and nose wheel sw uh, steering switch is talked about in the book, and that's we're going to take a look at that at the end of the discussion today here. But it's actually one of our memory items if we have a loss of braking. This is one of the corrective action. Uh, steps in that process that we're going to take to try to salvage whatever braking capabilities we have on the aircraft available to us still just to you know affect a safe outcome get the airplane to stop on the ground of course when we need it to do so if uh, everything else is not working uh, as it's advertised or as it should so like I said we'll we'll come back and talk about that but first I wanted to mention a couple things I'll bring up another slide here now like, like a a lot of other graphics that you know I bring up here, there's there's a lot of symbology and a lot of words here, and you know try not to get too overwhelmed and wrapped up in everything. You can pause the video and take a closer look at this the frame specifically if you want to pick it apart. But you know just a few things that I wanted to call your attention to here, and and coming back to what I mentioned a moment ago about you know more specifically what that switch is actually doing. One thing to call notice to here is we have this the BSCU, so this is the brake stealing, or excuse me, the brake steering control unit and the one and two here means just, there's just two channels of this one computer on board the airplane that of course you know it's it it alternates every flight leg essentially and it's there to you know back one another up if one channel fails it can still get signals from the other side so that's the the main computer essentially that the airplane is using to do the steering and the braking you know under normal circumstances and if there was to be a problem with this we also have this the abcu here so the alternate braking control unit and it's it's interesting because the the plane actually is is designed under you know let's call it like mostly normal circumstances even if there was some sort of malfunctioning going on with the braking system either hydraulically or electronically here there's actually these safeguards built into the system that the the plane will try to to you know seek out other inputs into the system to get the braking um, you know at the wheels essentially and get the plane to slow down at a, at a you know point in time when you might need it to um, so th there's actually some you know, a few levels of reversion, let's say, that, that happens in between, you know, when you, if there is a problem with braking, like I said, and, and the time that you actually need to go up and manipulate that switch on the, the forward area of the panel there. So all that I mean to say is that, you know, the, the very simple way to think about that switch and what it's there for and what it does for you is just, you know, kind of if all else fails and you want to just take all the bells and whistles out of the system and all the, you know, neat neat different things that it does for us and just drop down to like the very basic base level of operation and get whatever braking to those wheels that we, we possibly can. If there was such a degradation of you know failures and what have you, um, that switch specifically will force the airplane onto this alternate brake control unit there. And it's gonna, um, you know, of course, like we said, coming back and wrapping it up, uh, you're not gonna have nose wheel steering because you're actually, um, They've kind of locked out, you know, the, the uh, portions of the system that allows fluid to to go to the nose wheel steering, and it's it's just using this alternate means of braking, uh, using the yellow hydraulic system, of course. And you know, once again, to back up as well, remember our normal braking out at the wheels there is conducted with the green system. So most of the time, you know, that's that's the the, the hydraulic system that's picking up the load there to to apply those brakes out at the wheels. So, uh, like I said, it's just. 
you know, the, the best way to think of it is just, you know, we're, we're telling the plane, you know, hey, everything else that you've tried to do automatically has not worked for us. So we're going to just force the plane to, you know, go and revert to this, the base level of operation there. So uh, I hope that all makes sense to you guys. If you have any questions about that, please leave them in the comments down below there. And as I mentioned, I wanted to show you just right out of the, the, um, the QRH essentially is where the memory items are all listed. But remember, you know, there's a few, um, procedures that we actually have to have committed to memory. So every time we go in for training, you know, they, they test us on this to make sure that you've still, you can regurgitate it and you can perform these actions. And, you know, if you're not familiar with this concept, I mean, there's certain things that happen in the airplane that, you know, you don't exactly have time to whip out the books and, you know, do a reference and try to look it up and, you know, what have you. So that they're just, there's certain things the manufacturer tells you like, hey, you have to commit these things to memory. And this one is very logical in the sense that, you know, you are, you're going to apply this loss of breaking memory item if you are in the circumstance where, let's say you've just touched down, you're rolling down the runway, and you're, you're trying to, you know, either use the auto brakes, you're trying to use your feet to depress the brake pedals, and nothing's happening down there. Um, you, you, you know, in a few seconds, like, should be able to realize this, and if nothing else is working, you, you're going to take these corrective actions. So it walks you through your, through the whole procedure right here, but it, it, it basically says, you know, if, you know, the auto brakes haven't worked. You press the, the pedals with your, your feet. Um, if you don't get any braking, you're gonna go to max reverse. At that point, you'll release the pressure off your feet. Uh, you'll go up to that anti-skid and noseable steering switch, and you'll turn it off, and then you're gonna reapply the, the brake pedals. And one interesting thing to point out here too is that they, they tell you you have a max braking pressure of 1,000 PSI. And um, you know, one one thing to, to point out also is, you know, we'll talk about this once again when we, we come down to this section here, but you know, down here we have this the triple needle indicator here that tells us a little bit of specifics about what the yellow system is doing. So it's just, it's saying you're limited to that 1000 PSI of braking because they don't want you to lock the wheels up because you don't have any skid and you're not gonna be protected in that sense. So that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to tell you guys specifically about that switch there. Um, as always, if you have any other questions about the Airbus or just um, flying general, becoming a pilot, any kind of that good stuff, please leave a comments down below in the section there. And uh, if you do want to show some support for me, I've been trying to sell some t-shirts. So you can pick up your, your bus driver apparel down in the Teespring store there. You can look for the link in the description. So hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk again real soon.